Hi, my name is Athena Asparza. I'm 20 years old and I go to church at New Life Oakland. So this COVID-19 situation has definitely affected me in many ways. Um, I was sick for about five days. It was horrible. My mother was very, very sick. She actually developed pneumonia and she was um, found positive for the virus as well. And my cousin also had the virus and we were just really scared my whole family couldn't go to work we were all quarantined here together it was just crazy time i've been spending a lot of time with my sister um we've been watching movies painting together um just reading you know she's still in school so i've been helping her with her homework we've just been taking this time to really spend a lot of time together um definitely an answered prayer because we don't get to spend this much time together and even though, you know, it's been, you know, kind of decent spending time with my sister, it has been hard. I definitely am a busybody. I like to go outside. My family is the same way, you know. So we've just been, you know, trying to make the most out of this time, you know, together. We've definitely been praying together a lot more, been praying a lot more, like, in general, you know. So we've just been trying to make the most of it, you know, and definitely staying faithful to God, you know, has helped all of us because we're all over here losing our minds, you know, but still staying sane because we have Jesus, you know, and we're praying, you know, we're just really giving our faith to him and trusting him because this situation is not easy. One of the things that makes it so easy is being able to pray and worship and hear God's words every Sunday um, through Facebook Live, the New Life page. It definitely has helped, you know, being in small groups, even though it's virtual, you still get to connect and, and be with people. I tuned in on Sunday because ooh, LaMarcus and, and the whole worship team, they definitely Hey everybody, my name is Raquel. Welcome to our online worship service. If you head over to newlifeoakland.org, you'll find a welcome card to fill out for more information, a link to our community groups that are functioning throughout the week, and a place to give. If you haven't done so already, you can download the New Life app to your phone, scroll down to the Oakland section, and find the e-bulletin under the events section. Also, don't forget to find some sort of bread and drink for this morning's communion. I wish we could be together in person, but since we can't, I'm glad that we can gather together online. Good morning, New Life. Come on, let's stand and worship God this morning. He's worthy of the praise. Come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey.
Our God is healer, awesome. You're also in power, our God. Our God. One more time, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Oh, our God is healer, awesome in power. Come on, just lift your hands right where you are. I've got a new song for you this morning. Although you may not be able to catch the verses, catch this chorus. And we're just going to sing about God's faithfulness and His promises. So right where you are, just lift your hands and begin to worship the name of Jesus. You're worthy, oh God, and we love you. Come on, with your voices, just lift up a worship to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come.
Do whatever you want to 
whatever you want to And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Sing it again, sing it again, sing I will make room for you Despite everything, no matter what life may look like right now in this moment, whether it's joyful or painful, whether it's positive or negative, God, in all circumstances, we choose to bless your name still. So right now, here in this moment, before we receive the word, God, we ask that you would give us the grace to surrender. We can surrender and still hope for what you have in store. Hope and surrender can coexist together. And I pray, Lord God, that you would give us faith to believe that you are at work, that you are a good God, that there is nothing good that you withhold, and that you are at work and you're good, and you only do good, and you'll keep doing good, because you are good. So it's good. We believe that tonight. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, My name is Vincent Porter. This is my lovely wife, Sharina, and we serve as leaders here at New Life Oak Lawn, and we have the pleasure of uh, leaving you on communion this morning. So if you haven't already, grab your juice, uh, your bread, or cracker so you can participate with us. Um, I always find that ironic uh, when I read the passage of scripture that talks about uh, the Last Supper, um, that Jesus, although he knew what his body being broken and his blood being uh, poured out, uh, he knew what that represented, uh, yet and still he gave thanks. Uh, His disciples had no clue what was going on or what he was talking about, but he knew. Um, Yet and still, again, he gave thanks. And so in this season of life where it seems like we may not have a lot to be thankful for, uh, we always can be thankful that Jesus' body was broken and that his blood was poured out just for us. So uh, please take the bread and commune with us. And Jesus' blood that was poured out for us, uh, represented by the juice. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for our time together, Lord. I thank you that in such uncertain times that we're able to come together, worship together, and and most importantly, still have communion together, that we're able to keep that consistent. Um, Lord, I ask that you'll continue to keep us through this chaotic time, Lord. I ask that you just have us to remain focused on you, Lord. I thank you so much for this worship experience and I ask that you'll continue to lead us and guide us um, throughout the rest of the week. It's in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Enjoy service, everyone. Hi, New Life family, this is Mark Job, and I just wanted to let you know that we have an extraordinary opportunity to help people in need during this COVID-19 crisis. Many of you have been asking, how can I help? Uh, I I wanna help families and I wanna help those that are especially vulnerable during this time. Well, I'm happy to say that New Life Centers, which is a part of our ministry partnering together is doing an extraordinary job. In fact, overwhelmed by the demand, especially for food. Matt DiMatteo is here with me right now. Matt, could you just tell us real quickly what the need is and how people can give? Absolutely. So during this time, uh, before COVID, we were feeding about 100 families per week. We would get fresh food from Trader Joe's and deliver it to them. After everything happened, uh, we had a huge spike. We opened up a sign-up link and over 500 families signed up. 
And so right now we've expanded to four days a week. We're delivering 100 boxes uh, of food per day to families in need. We have volunteers who come, receive donations, pack them up in boxes, load them up in the truck, and then head out and deliver them uh, to houses along the way. And so not only are we bringing physical boxes of food, but we're also praying with families and connecting them to the hope of Christ. And so right now, uh, that's, that's a huge need and we have families in need. Uh, so any donations of either food or helping toward this fund will go directly to the work right on the ground. I love it. And if you want to give, we need donations right now. It'll go directly to help families in need. Uh, so you can give by going to newlifechicago.org. There'll be a big button that says COVID-19 fund. And this money will go directly towards buying food and meeting those needs. Thank you for making the difference in Jesus' name. Hey, welcome uh, this morning, New Life Community Church. Uh, after the video we just watched, I uh, want to keep in mind and remind us that today uh, we are starting, and obviously if next week or the week after works better for you, we're going to be taking up uh, a special offering for our New Life Centers. Uh, and this offering is going really to help with the expansion uh, of our food giveaway that we are doing and supporting families and meals through this time. Uh, to think that a few weeks ago uh, we were giving and, and feeding 100 families, and now we're poised uh, for 2,000. Uh, and so the money we give will go towards the equipment and the things necessary to get the food uh, to us and then where it needs to go after that. Uh, and so please uh, click on the link for uh, the COVID-19 response that goes straight to center so you can give through that way. Um, and there's also going to be opportunities for you uh, to show up and serve. So if you're itching to get out of the house and you want to physically help in some kind of way, uh, there's all kinds of opportunities uh, to be able to serve during the week in all different capacities. So uh, we want you to check those out so that you can plug in that way. Uh, also, I uh, just want to keep fresh in your mind <clears throat> that we have a, uh, a playlist on Spotify that our worship team has put together to make sure uh, that the music that we worship to on Sunday mornings can be playing through your house and in your car as you're driving uh, and in your headphones as you're working throughout the week. Uh, and so if you just go to Spotify and type in New Life Oaklawn, you'll be able to find that. Uh, and then the last one is every week we've been putting out an e-bulletin uh, that is just serves to help you with information and all kinds of stuff that uh, we want you to know and resources we want you to have, links to our weekly uh, Bible reading planner in there, uh, any um, documents that we want to send out, and, and things that are just helpful tools for you. Uh, so make sure you continue to check that out uh, and know that those things are coming. Uh, pray with me, and then we're going to jump into the Word. Lord Jesus, this morning, uh, God, I'm grateful that you are... Uh, continue to, to, to sit on the throne in these uncertain times, God, that we don't have to worry or be afraid uh, about what tomorrow holds, uh, knowing that you already know that you, you've been there, you've seen it, you've, you've ordained it, you've planned it. Uh, so God, give us peace, give us ease. Uh, and, and God, especially as we jump into our, our, um, our message today, God, I pray that, uh, that, that all the distractions that pull us away uh, from the abundant life that you've called us into, this fullness of life that uh, that through who we are uh, flows your spirit that brings uh, this true life into who we are. Uh, so God, would you uh, move this morning so we can see in your word timeless truths and promises that you've given uh, that are still as relevant today as when you first spoke them, uh, that mean just as much for us now as for the people that first heard it. So Father, uh, what we need today is to get back to uh, this true, fullness, uh, overflowing, abundant life uh, that you promised through Jesus. So God, uh, help us get there, uh, but then also through your spirit, help us live and walk that out throughout our everyday. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, when I was in junior high uh, and going into high school, one of my favorite things uh, was uh, when church would do lock-ins. And I don't know if you ever experienced any of that, but I loved uh, as a junior high kid and as a high school kid, uh, ultimately, if you're not familiar, they would basically, uh, you'd get there before like 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, they would lock the doors or whatever. Uh, and then basically it was just an all-night uh, dodgeball, pizza, basketball, um, uh, and basically binge drinking Mountain Dew and, and those kind of things. And I absolutely loved it. Um, but then it hit me uh, that all of a sudden I at some point hit an age uh, where the same thing didn't give me life anymore. It actually drained the life out of me. At some point when I became the adult leader in the group, I realized how little I actually enjoyed those lock-ins. 
Uh, and then when I was younger, we would go to Six Flags in St. Louis because that was closer to where we lived. Uh, and, and so when we were there, I loved going on all the roller coasters. I loved the Ninja and the Screaming Eagle. And I remember when they put in <clears throat> the Batman uh, roller coaster down there. Uh, and it was the first inverted roller coaster and all this stuff. And it was kind of crazy. And I remember waiting in line for three hours. Uh, and this roller coaster went up 100 feet and it would go 50 miles an hour. Uh, and in a minute and 45 seconds, uh, the roller coaster would take you through the ride of your life. And, um, and I remember <clears throat> hitting that spot where I just can't do roller coasters anymore. And the same thing that gave me that adrenaline bump and the same thing that was exciting, uh, all of a sudden became uh, kind of a thing that just wasn't even enjoyable anymore. Uh, and, and a lot of us have that in a lot of things where the things that used to give us life no longer breathe that same life into us, that the stuff we used to enjoy uh, lost uh, what it once had. And, and so some of you in your marriage uh, are feeling that where, uh, man, you remember those, those date nights before and you remember that first year after and you remember the excitement and the love. And somehow down the road, you get to the spot where you look back and it just, it doesn't breathe the same life into you as what it used to. Uh, for some of you, it may be singleness is uh, you were in situations and seasons of life where you prayed for uh, a spot where you were just single. And now uh, it may seem like that singleness is, is God not answering your prayer uh, where at one time it was. And for some, uh, it may be a hobby or interest that used to energize you, but now it, it, you don't really care anymore and it doesn't do anything. I, I used to uh, be able to play video games for 12 hours at a time, uh, and now it, it just takes a lot for me to sit down and be able to enjoy that again. A, a lot of us have lost the abundant fullness of life in some area, if not all areas of our life. Uh, but when we, uh, when the adrenaline bump of a new opportunity or a new relationship wears off or life circumstances uh, have created some kind of divide between us and them or us and that, we can often feel stuck and lifeless uh, in this situation that used to bring life. When it slips away, we drift towards the areas in our life that are actually thriving uh, where we're being filled with life. Uh, meaning that a lot of times we, uh, when, when something feels like it's starting to die, we, we kind of abandon it to run after the things that are going well. <clears throat> the reality is, is it's not healthy because we leave this wake of uh, unfinished things behind us. But if we end up neglecting and abandoning the area of lives that require our attention, uh, we end up walking away from some of the stewardship that God's placed in our life. Uh, we celebrate our victories publicly because we want everyone to see uh, what we're doing that's going well. But privately, we are suffering silently in relationships or circumstances that were once alive but are now dead or dying. And some of us are either stuck in life, limping through life, uh, or frustrated with the never-ending tension uh, that life brings or on some kind of proverbial uh, ventilator, just hanging on, uh, not sure what it is that's causing us to still live. And today, I want us to look at getting back to the fullness of life and this overflowing life and what Bible speaks to as an abundant life, a blessed life, a life-giving life that because of what God's doing in us and how it brings life to us, that that overflows to the people around us. And I think some of us feel like our Spiritual lives are either maintaining or they're dying. And it may be that we've neglected our walk with Jesus to pursue areas that were giving more of an immediate bump uh, into uh, what it felt like to have an abundant life. Uh, the other things looked like it was bringing more success, so we chase those areas, or we felt like we were getting more immediate results in other things. So our, our, our spiritual life was one of those things that because it wasn't bringing life anymore, we left it to pursue uh, uh, other things that were. Uh, we all need a reminder of how we got here and how to get back to the fullness of life. Uh, there are different words that are used in the Greek language throughout the Bible for uh, this idea of life. Uh, there's the Greek word bios that we see being used, and that's where we get, you know, biology. And uh, it's, it's basically the idea of a heartbeat um, is that you have a pulse. It's not necessarily the quality of your life, but just the presence of it. Uh, it's kind of what the coroner uh, gets to measure is, are you living or are you not? Is it breathing or isn't it? Uh, but that's not the life that, that 
we hear Jesus saying that he brings or Paul saying we need to get back to or the fullness of what the Spirit brings when it shows up. That, that, that word is this Greek word zoe. Uh, and that word is this idea of living or fullness it actually involves this connotation of the Spirit that's in there. It, it's about your being, not just being present, but it's about the quality of your presence. Uh, talking about how are you when you go out? How are you when you're alone? How are you uh, when things are uh, going the way you want them to or not? Is, is the life in you dying or is it alive? And, and what we'll find in scripture is God promises that he brings one of those and that Satan takes the same thing away. I want us to get back to the fullness and the abundance and the overflow of really living. Uh, and so uh, in Genesis, what we read is, is that God creates the earth, but humans are, are, are different from the rest of creation, that there's a uniqueness to how he creates us. Uh, we're created in his image, and he gives us calling, and he gives us purpose uh, to rule and to have authority. He breathes life into the man, uh, and, and the only way we are alive is through God breathing into us, and it's interesting that life exists when God's breathing into it, and, and that he also gives us uh, these tasks, these, this area to rule and have authority over uh, everything that he created, and so uh, he doesn't pull away that, but he gives it to us, but it's crazy because as you keep going uh, in the story of Genesis, what you find is, is there's this area where we have a tree of life, but then there's this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and over and over throughout the Genesis story, God creates us so people, uh, humans, always have the ability to come to him, to the place where he set up for life, abundant life, overflowing, uh, life in the fullness and we can go to God's provision all we want, and we continue often, just like Adam and Eve, to choose the tree that promises us control and removes us from God. And over and over, I think we see, and I see, and I'm sure you do too, is the options that we take aren't so much different than uh, the ones that we read in Scripture. Is God promises if you come and chase after me, there'll be a fullness of life, but don't go after that one. But the one promises us uh, 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 that we have authority and that we can rule and that we can have everything that we want. The hard part is we have to leave God to go towards it. Removing us from God carries our life further away from God's uh, uh, source of life. Life is given in our proximity to him. If we're close to him, uh, then we experience the fullness of it. If we're far away from him, we feel the depleting of it. Satan's lies uh, throughout Genesis and then ongoing throughout the Old Testament, and then we find him again with Jesus in the temptation. Uh, we also later hear James kind of put some names to these things, but when we hear it, it's that we can rule, that we can be in charge and receive life even apart from God. And this idea that now we can be in charge of things, that uh, if we want a, a, a life of, of wealth and riches and whatever, that we can go and work our tails off to get that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to be in line with what God says, but we can still have all that, or we can have status and position, and we can have an identity that we choose, but we have to leave who God's called us to be to chase after the thing that we want us to be. And so over and over through here, we, we hear it. In Jesus' temptation, you hear Satan say things like this, if you want all this, then all you have to do is follow me. And that's the same thing that gets us tripped up every time, and we're still falling for it. Uh, we're cut off from this zoe, this Greek word that means this abundant life that they had. And then all we end up left with is the temporary Sorry, this temporary bios of curse and toil. <clears throat> when God is no longer the provider and the supplier of the fullness of life, we take it for ourselves or then we start giving that fullness of life to someone or something else that promises it to us. And in the end of life, uh, we end up feeling uh, uh, this fear and this anger and this selfishness. We start grasping onto anything that looks like pleasure and possession and position. And all throughout Scripture, even in our own lives, we see these same three lies that Satan throws at us to pull us away from this eternal life, this everlasting, this overflowing, this abundant 
life. In Genesis 3, it was the fall uh, where Adam and Eve chose to walk away. In, in the temptation with Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, uh, it's Satan telling him, you can have all this stuff, you just have to follow me. In John, 1 John chapter 2, he calls it what it is. He says it this way in chapter 2, verse 15. He says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, and then he names these, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And I love verse 17, he says, the world and its desires will pass away but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And if we're talking about this idea of the abundance and the fullness of life, I think probably just as helpful for us to know how we get it is to be reminded of how it gets taken away. And here's three lies that Satan uses over and over in scripture. It's three uh, uh, traps that keep us from this abundant life. And the first one is this, is the trap of temporary pleasure, this uh, lust for the flesh. Uh, and, and it comes through the question of, don't I want to feel good, right? Friday, you're exhausted, you're tired. And the question becomes, I, I don't want to feel tired. I want to feel, and then you fill in the blank. And then you chase whatever it is that makes you feel that way. Instead of pursuing what fills you for the long haul, uh, we end up chasing whatever makes us feel better right now. And in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, uh, he reminds us this. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Uh, not to chase your feelings or let your heart lead you, but uh, uh, and we end up being led by our feelings. And, and that's what got us into this mess. And scripture is clear. Don't trust any of that stuff. There, your feelings are bad leaders. Don't follow them. It's okay to feel them. It's just okay bad to be dictated by them. And so in Psalm chapter 73, verse 26, he says, my flesh and my heart may fail. Uh, my feelings and the things I want and the things that, uh, uh, that, that make me feel good, that may fail me all the time, but God is the strength of my heart and he's my portion forever. Now, I'm not going to get it right all the time, but God is the strength of my heart and that he's all I need forever. Uh, you don't have to look for temporary pleasure that temporarily makes you feel good uh, because that ends up turning into a life of temporary and instant gratification, bouncing around for that next high and still feeling empty. Uh, God promises us in this is God is all we need forever, that if we have him, we'll have whatever we need. Uh, a lie that you need immediate gratification never tells you how temporary it is and how often you'll be left coming back for more. Uh, but God promises an abundant life that continually provides satisfaction. Uh, the second uh, 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 trap that we get caught in from Satan over and over and continuously is this, is the, the, the trap of temporary uh, possession, uh, what James calls the lust of the eye. And, and it comes from this place where we look at stuff and lifestyles and uh, ways that people live and things that they have. And it's all the stuff that we see and we realize we don't have it and we want it. Uh, instead of drawing near to God who promises you to give you everything that you need, we chase what will provide for us what we want. And in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, he said to them, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Uh, and it's interesting, that word life, man's life does not exist. It's not the bios life. It's not your pulse. Uh, it doesn't mean that you stop living when you stop having stuff. What it says is if you're trying to fill voids in your life, if you think what's going to make you excited or happy is buying that next thing and purchasing the next deal or coming home with a bag full of uh, whatever, is you'll f slowly realize that that is not where abundance of life comes from, but life instead comes from him. So often our chase to accumulate more uh, drives us so far away from the very people and opportunities that God actually created us for. Uh, what makes us feel good, we think, is to acquire and possess, and ultimately what it is is to draw near and be present. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says this, keep, our li keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has never, God has said this, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Coming off of this place of being content, 
and not under, or understanding that it doesn't come from this love of money, but rather it comes from the nearness and the closeness of God, that when we realize he's never left us, we don't need to fill that hole with anything else. And he doesn't say keep your lives free from money. This isn't a call into strict poverty where you have absolutely nothing uh, and, and no possessions. We can do a lot of good with more, but it's the love of money that stops us from giving and keeps us accumulating. Uh, the issue isn't being rich, it's living a rich lifestyle, wanting more and to keep more rather than wanting to give away more. And then he promises that you don't have to be in constant pursuit of more. Uh, God will continue to provide what you need, uh, that you don't need to chase the things that you think uh, are going to fill spots or there's a void uh, for tomorrow and, and you're still in today and so you're trying to chase it down without trusting that God has that figured out, or that if you've been faithful, that he already has a plan. You are renting this life. Uh, and that at some point you will be evicted from this world and everything you have stays behind. And for a lot of us, you know, whether it's uh, a shopping or accumulating, whatever it is that fills that possession or that pleasure spot for you, uh, is you're acquiring things that you cannot take with you and your house is full of stuff that no one else is going to need. And that those were the things immediately that you thought were going to help make you feel good. And then all of a sudden you get stuck into a spot where you can't take any of it with you. Someone else is going to have to do the work of buying a dumpster to clean it all up. And we're left wondering, uh, did that really do what we thought it was going to do? Is, is where you're going, is it so good that you don't care what you're leaving behind? Or is where you're going so uncertain uh, that all you have is to accumulate and to acquire and to want and to need the things that you're currently clinging to? The lie that you need more never tells you the problems that come with more. It never tells you how it steals your gratitude, how it steals your joy. It never tells you that it steals the life from you because more is always a moving target. Uh, you're never going to have enough and you'll always feel like you need it. But God promises an abundant life that continually provides towards your purpose. That as long as you're following him, living into where he's called you to, he'll give you everything you need to get where you need to go. Uh, the third and last trap that we fall into is this, is a temporary position. Uh, what uh, in, in uh, First John he calls the pride of life. And the reality for us becomes when we start asking, don't I want to be in a better place? Don't I want to be in a better position? Don't I want to uh, arrive somewhere different? Now, some of us are not in that place because we've not been following Jesus, that he has more for us than what we've tried to get on our own. But some of us are chasing a position, thinking that that's going to solve all of our problems. Uh, so some of us need to cling to Jesus to get to the place that he's called us to be, while others are chasing some other place that isn't exactly where he wants us. And instead of drawing near to God, who has called us his children and his treasured possession, we chase recognition and status and reputation and importance and a preferred identity. I love the words of James in chapter four, where he says this, God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. And it's crazy how we continually justify that it elevates us. Then God must want us to have it. If it's going to get us somewhere that's favorable, then God must want me to have that because it's better for me. Uh, and over and over, man, Philippians 2, uh, Paul describes this to the church of Philippi extremely clearly, is to become like that of Christ, uh, who humbled himself, and that that is what elevated him and put him to a higher place. That it's when we lay down our crowns, not try to accumulate more, uh, that, that we get to where we're supposed to be. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 says, Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, let not the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches, but let the one who boasts boast about this, that they may have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. And so we can think that we're smart and it doesn't really matter. And we can think uh, that you're strong or that all your stuff and your positions are important. 
But take a look at the lives of the people who have the understanding of fully, to fully know God and look at the quality of their life. Uh, Look at how peaceful they are and gentle and kind and loving and generous they are. They may have less than what you see everyone else have, but their life brings more life to more people than those that have it. Uh, The lie that you need to be in charge of more never tells you what you will leave behind in pursuit of that control or authority. Uh, God promises an abundant life where he is in control and we get the responsibility to steward aspects of his kingdom. Uh, Jesus at the cross. Uh, A few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter and we forget sometimes that after Easter, we get to continue to live into this resurrected life. The cross reminds us that Jesus defeated death, but he didn't just defeat it. He came as this verified giver of this new life. Uh, that that we get reminded we can have new life. And it's not just uh, having the new life, but it's living into that new life. Uh, Not just possessing it, but but changing the way that we live out our life. Uh, For some of us, it would be like if we swapped out our car and somebody gave us a helicopter instead. And a lot of us feel like we're still sitting in that thing in this new life trying to figure out how it works because the turn signal and we're trying to operate this new life as though it were still that old one. And it changes the game. We get around differently. We see the world differently. The perspective is different than the old one that we had. Our issues might be uh, that we're still stuck in this new life trying to operate it the way we did our old one. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 47, I want to put a, uh, a, a painting uh, that uh, Juan uh, Carlos Baez put up for us uh, and, and painted. And I asked him, a good friend of ours, a uh, member of New Life, uh, asked him if he would illustrate this image for us so we could see it. So I just want you to hear me as you're looking at this image, but it's this idea in Ezekiel that life is literally flowing from the throne of God, that from the temple uh, in his presence flows this abundant life. He says this, a man brought me back to the entrance of this temple and I saw water coming out under the threshold of the temple toward the east because the temple faced the east. And the water was coming down, trickling from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out through the north gate, and he led me around the outside to the outer gate facing the east, and the water was trickling from the south side. And as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a a thousand cubits. And then he led me through water that was ankle deep. So it's not just a trickling stream. Now it's ankle deep and it's a little bit deeper. Uh, He measured out another thousand cubits uh, as they keep going down the river, uh, realized that the water was now knee deep, that the water continues to get deeper as they go further. He measured another thousand and then it was waist deep. He measured off another thousand. And by now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was so deep enough to swim in a river that one could not cross. And he asked me, son of man, do you see this? And then they led me back to the banks of the river. And when I got to the shore, I realized uh, how many trees on each side of the river. And he said to me, this water flows towards the Eastern region and goes down into Arabah where it enters into the Dead Sea. This river of life flows into these dead places. And when it empties into that dead sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. It does a miraculous change in what it was to what it now can be. And now that it is fresh, swarms of living creatures will live where the river flows. And there will be large numbers of fish because the water flows there. Because this living water flows to these dead places, life is popping up. And it makes that salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. And some of us need to pay attention to that. He says, uh, fishermen will stand along the shore and there will be uh, all kinds of places for spreading their nets because now uh, where there's life, now uh, we can enjoy and we can gain and there's uh, uh, sustenance that comes from that. The fish of many kinds like in the Mediterranean, but the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow up on the river. Uh, Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Uh, Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. The fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. I I love this image that is given to Ezekiel of this idea that all you've got to do is get in the river. Uh, You've got to get yourself to a place to be with God. 
and then get in the river of life that flows out of him and watch it flow into the dead areas of your life and your family and flow into the dead areas of your neighborhood and city. Watch it flow into the dead areas of the way we think and the habits we've gotten into and watch life start to grow and watch an abundance and a fullness of who God's called us to be and what he can provide. Because as it flows out of who he is, it allows us and it takes us deeper and deeper and deeper to the point where we're over our heads and we can't control it anymore. Where all we have to do is sit and enjoy everything that the fullness of life coming from God is able to bring and gives access to. Because if we start at the temple and we flow from it, we will find that we end up seeing God bringing life to all kinds of dead places not just natural life, Uh, life to areas where nothing has ever been able to grow, Uh, the lonely and insecure parts of your soul, Uh, life in the dead marriage or dead hope of finding a spouse, Uh, life to your purpose and calling that you thought maybe there's no purpose for you, but God has one and created you in it, life uh, to the people around you as you lead their dead, decaying, lost lives back to Jesus who brings life through it. Uh, Jesus reminds us in John chapter 10, verse 9, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and they will find pasture. And we tend to think our lives will be trapped and that we will lose life when we follow Jesus, but we're trapped when we follow anything else. Jesus promises this place where we can come and go. There's freedom in his presence. Uh, The thief in verse 10, he says, comes only to steal and destroy. But I have come that they would have life, zoe, abundance, overflowing, fullness of life, and that they would have it to the full. Uh, Get this, Jesus came that you could have life to the full. Uh, You cannot live or give away on an empty tank. You will always be empty if you are the one in control of filling up your own tank. John chapter 17, verse two, and this is the verse we'll leave off on. He says, for you granted him authority, and this is Jesus praying, you've granted me authority over all people, that I would give eternal life to those you have given me. Now, this is eternal life. This is Zoe. This is life everlasting, the abundant life, that they would know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. Not knowing about God or being able to pass a test on a Bible exam, but knowing this relationship, this submission where he is king and we are subjects, where he is the father and we are the children. You may know about him, but the question for us becomes, do we know him? Do we know his peace? Do we know his love? Do we understand mercy and grace? Uh, Do we know him as a father who, because he loves us, would always provide and always take care and always be near? If you need the fullness of life to flow back into your life, uh, will you give yourself over to him and to gain what only he can give? Uh, Stop going back to the wrong tree. Uh, Go back to Genesis where there's these options. We continue to chase the one that promises promises us control so long as we walk away from God. It hasn't worked, I'm guessing, so far in our lives. It's the thing that trips us up every time. It's the dead places never produce real life. Jesus gave his life. He defeated life's greatest threat, which is death, so that we could have eternal life in abundance. And this week, we're going to be jumping into another Bible reading plan that we would love for you to jump in with us. It's going to be in the e-bulletin you'll find on Facebook and everywhere we've mentioned before. Uh, We want you to be able to see and experience and walk in and understand who God is. And as you draw near to him to watch the fullness, because whether it's us getting back to life in our home, uh, getting back to real life in our families, real life in our neighborhood and what it looks like to know and love our neighbors, or when life gets back to whatever normal is going to look like, are we getting back with an abundant life or are we going back with the same dried up, exhausted life that still chases the stuff that we can't have? Or if we get it, we'll fall short of what God had for us in the first place. Now, let me pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that uh, just like Jesus praised God, that, that we would know you, the one and only true God, and that we would know Jesus Christ whom you've sent. Uh, God, I pray that... Um, 
that, that this would not uh, come from a place in our lives of just wanting to have more information. Uh, there's a chance that wherever we're watching this message on has access to uh, everything that the internet provides. So it's not information we need. Uh, but in this season, what we've seen is a dryness of relationship, of connectivity, of being close. So God, I pray that we would draw near to you. God, if there's people uh, who are with us this morning that have not surrendered, uh, Father, would you comfort them and put your arm around them and, and gently usher them into uh, who you are, uh, that they would see you for how you love them. Uh, God, I pray that, that your entire church, that all of us watching and those uh, that are all around us, God, that we would find our life source back in you so that it would overflow and pour into all the dead areas of our life. That's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It was great to worship with you this morning. Don't forget, you can head over to the New Life app for the e-bulletin and to submit your prayer requests. If you're not a part of an online community group already, you can also go over to newlifeoakland.org to get connected. If there's anything that we can be helping you with, please call or email us. We love you and we're praying for you. Have a great week.